Yeah, thank you. Yes. So biceps and triceps, let's cover those two muscles, okay? And their actions. Which joint are we looking at when we cover biceps and triceps muscles? Mainly. Elbow, yes, perfect. So your elbow joint is should, should be the focus of your thoughts when you think about how to work your biceps or triceps. When you go to the gym, you're going to think of the exercises. Let's say you want to define your biceps or your triceps. What am I going to do? And that is a very common question coming from your parents, for example, or your friends who have sagging triceps. I have that, I get that question so many times. Like, Olive, please tell me some things that I can do for this. Okay, the salt and pepper sag, um, that's what we call it. So the, when you go to the gym and try to decide what to do for those two muscle groups, you just have to focus on the joint. And what is the joint? Elbow. So we have two actions that can happen at the elbow, flexion and extension, okay? So this is my fully extended elbow joint. joint. And when I flex it, that is the pull action, Andrew. You are right, okay? So when you do flex your elbow, you pull. And that is your biceps working. When you extend your elbow from the bent position, okay? That is a, an elbow extension, and that is a push, okay? Pull and, when you look at it from the push and pull perspective, Triceps will be doing the pushing, biceps will be doing the pulling. If you were to uh, design your workout based on push and pull, that's how you should be uh, categorizing these two, okay? And again, like I said in the beginning of our class, these two muscle groups should be saved for the end of your workout because they're the, the accessory muscle groups, they're the assistant, uh, muscle groups which helps which help other exercises happen okay like the lat pull down or bench press bench press you extend your elbows so your triceps will help or lat pull down your biceps will help or seated rows your biceps will help so if you get them tired in the beginning of the workout those you know rows those lat pull down bicep I mean uh, bench presses will not be performed to their maximum with their full capacity because the, the biceps, the weakest link in the whole kinetic chain will be, you know, wasted and you won't be able to pull through as much as you could potentially. Does it make sense? Okay, so biceps will do the pulling, triceps will do the pushing. Even though it, you know, when you extend your elbows from the, the flex position this way, your palms are facing up, okay? And it doesn't look like you're pushing, but you're actually pushing this whole bone, the lower portion of your arm, down, okay? And it doesn't have to be in this position. You can be standing and turning your palms down and pushing this way, which is called triceps push down, okay? Or you can be on the prone position, chest down, and pushing against the floor, pushing your body weight against the floor, which is a push-up, by the way, okay? When you do your push-ups with a narrow um, grip or narrow hand position like this, close to one another, or keeping your elbows close to your sides, and do your push-ups that way, that's going to work your triceps as well, okay? so. If we look at the chart that I created for you. Yes. Back arm triceps are, is going to be worked with elbow extension. And the exercises are overhead triceps extension. So if you grab anything, it doesn't have to be a dumbbell, okay? Even my water bottle, okay? And flex my elbow right here and then what do i do push up okay it's not a pull that's why you should not have a tight grip 
That's why I'm trying to teach you if it's a push or a pull so that you can do it properly in the gym too. So when you want to work your triceps, it is going to be a push exercise. Don't forget this. This is a key thing. Okay. So I'm not going to put a, a tight, tight grip or hard grip on my water bottle and, you know, just, just hook it there, if you will. And it's just sitting there. And then I push up, push my palm up toward the ceiling to work my triceps. That's my overhead extension. When I grab a pair of dumbbells or just one dumbbell, this is how I teach my clients too. You have to be hooking this, you know, there is this ledge on the dumbbell. Uh, hook your hand underneath it, palm facing up. So instead of just grabbing it with all you have, okay, and then pulling up this way, you got to let it go and push up toward the ceiling. That's how you work your triceps. That's the overhead extension. And you can do this with a band easily, even sitting, you know. Uh, I used to teach this class to uh, a group of people who were um, like war wounded uh, soldiers or old people who are bound to a wheelchair they can still do it sitting and uh they can hold on to the end of the the hold on i'll just show you this is the band i can just fix it on the back okay and i wrap the other other end look at my palm palm is not gripping putting a tight grip on the band i'll just let it go, face my palm up, and then push up that way, okay? So that's your overhead triceps extension. Triceps kickback, uh, as the name imply, implies, it is a kickback. So it, your arm position is behind you. And people do this wrong most of the time because they mix it up with the, the rows, okay? When you do a row, you let go of the dumbbell and now you pull up this way, right? This is the beginning of a triceps kickback. Just to position yourself to, to start your triceps kickback, yes, you will do a row, just one. This is your beginning position. Then kick back, push, okay? Remember, it's not a pull, but it's a push backwards. So I'm just going to loosely hold on to my dumbbell and kick back this way. I'm not, I'm not moving the upper arm whatsoever, just the lower arm. This is your triceps kick back. Any questions? We'll try all of those, OK? Um, I like doing the triceps kick back with a band, OK, anchored to anything, can be coming from the, the floor up or can be parallel, anchored to the handle of the door, doesn't matter, as long as my palm is facing up. That works, one of the fibers of the triceps like you haven't seen before. Okay, so let me show you, anchored to the door and I'm gonna, Keep my palm facing up, okay? And here is my row, and then push this way. This is a great exercise for the sagging portion of your triceps, okay? <laughs> Even the guys ask me this question. Okay, that's your kickback. You can do it with a dumbbell or uh, with the band, fa palm facing up. Side push-up. This is a great core exercise as well. I'll show you today. It's done on the floor, so I'm just going to incorporate it into our core sec portion of the workout today. It's just for one arm, so it's unilateral, okay? Not both arms working at the same time. And skull, skull crusher. <laughs> the name is kind of weird. 
uh, but it looks like you're crushing your skull with the base of your dumbbell, okay? You're going to be supine, which is laying on your back, arms up above your head, and then bend your elbows like you're going to crush your skull, and then up. We'll do that too on the floor in the beginning of the workout. And then dips, they're great because it uh, is more of a, um, how do I say that, stabilization for your core. So you're just gonna do it uh, on the edge of a chair or your uh, bed or your couch or, your, or a bench in the gym. Since we can't get to the gym <clears throat> nowadays, we have to, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> make it work somehow. So I'll show you the dips and the narrow width push-up. So narrow width push-up, you can be as creative as possible, but the main thing is to keep your arms fixed to the size of your body. Okay, you can have a really narrow grip, which is really hard to do, or you can have a, a diamond push-up, hands down. But with the diamond push-up, I forgot to list, put it in the list there, the diamond push-up. Um, you can do it with a regular push-up position or knee push-up position, but we kind of do this with a, a pike position, like the downward facing dog. So your hands are with a downward angle, okay? I'll show you today. And then uh, the hand position is at the diamond shape. And now you just let your head down and up, down and up. And that works your tricep. The reason why we place our hands in different angles is to hit the different angles of the triceps muscle. Because it's not just parallel fibers. It's got different angles, just like your chest. Chest got different fibers. Some of them face down or point down. Some of them point sideways, some of them face up. That's why you have the incline, decline, and that's the same thing for your triceps. Any questions for the biceps and triceps? The biceps, basically a pull, okay? So you have to be pulling against the gravity's pull. Uh, you can do this sitting, of course. I like to do this standing because I use more of my core when I do it standing, okay? You can do one hand at a time. The only variety comes from the position of your uh, hands. So if you face the palms up, that's called a bicep curl. You can do it, again, unilaterally or bilaterally. You, if you face your palms together, it's called a hammer curl and it incorporates another muscle group right around your in, uh, elbow. You don't have to know the names, but that's why we do it differently, okay? You have to do it differently. If you do just bicep curls, you're just lacking that muscle group around your um, elbow, and you don't wanna do that. You have to incorporate some hammer curls. It looks like a hammer, like you're hammering your, the front of your shoulder with the, the dumbbell. And then and there is an uppercut, which adds that explosiveness, like up, up. It works your biceps. And also, since your bicep crosses your shoulder joint, it's weird. What did we say? If a muscle crosses a joint, if you move that joint, that muscle will work. So if you, this is called a shoulder flexion, okay? So if I kind of um, weigh my dumbbell in my hand without a tight grip and just lift my arm up like a front raise, with the front raise, I'm kind of just using the front deltoid by keeping my palm facing up. But if I turn my palm, this way, yes, I am using the front deltoid or working out the front deltoid, but as well as the front deltoid, you're gonna try this. What did we talk about the moment arm? If any weight is away from the fulcrum, okay, or the, the center, 
okay? It's going to put a lot of work, force, down to the hinge point. So if I move my hand away from my shoulder, it's going to work my shoulder as well as whatever muscles are crossing that shoulder joint, which includes your biceps too. So that's another variety. That's another choice that you can incorporate into your workouts. Okay, so that's biceps and triceps. Of course, again, my style of working out is I just can't let that time go by or get wasted by doing just one muscle group exercise. So when I'm doing my biceps, I sure to include some lower body exercises. Okay, when I'm doing my bicep curls, I can do it in a, a, a stationary lunge position, just like this, okay? Just, or up and down lunge and biceps at the same time. Or single leg squat and a triceps overhead extension. But these exercises need to be really good first. I, you know, I, um, separately, like you have to be performing your biceps or triceps or lunges or squats in a perfect manner so that you can combine those two together in one exercise. Yes, Anadina. So is it also important to keep your elbows as close to your body, especially while doing the, right? Yes, yes okay. biceps or your triceps, both of them so that you stabilize here and move the lower portion of your arm toward the shoulder or your upper portion of the arm so that you guarantee that you're hitting that muscle group, yes. And not incorporating any other muscle group than cheating. And I see that happening in the gyms. Guys try to lift so heavy and then they end up doing this and their elbows are facing up this way. They're working their other muscle groups other than their biceps? Good question. Any other questions? When you're doing the uppercut, is there any elbow joint motion on that? Or is it just keeping your arms straight going up? Yes, it is a, sta a, a stabilization exercise, actually. You don't really move your elbows in a flexion and extension manner. You just flex it, and then with that flexion, you add you just an keep explosive. that same. You just keep yes. that same angle here. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Health issues. That's another topic. This is important, guys. I'm going to share my screen with you. This is important because we have been seeing this rising in our society. Okay. Uh, these three. So that's, that's all I'm going to cover, metabolic syndrome and hypertension and diabetes. Um, yes, you might say, I don't have diabetes. What are you talking about? But the research shows us, I'm going to start from the number three. Diabetes is the sugar disease. Blood sugar being so high in your bloodstream, it just causes other problems, hypertension, or circulation problems because your blood is so thick, the viscosity is so low, it doesn't get to the places where it needs to get. So more than one third of Americans has pre-diabetes. That means they have insulin resistance. We talked about this. Insulin is the hormone that uh, has a mission of putting that extra blood sugar that runs in your bloodstream into storages in the body, which is liver and your muscles. But that, if that, if you expose your body into a lot of sugar, that mechanism somehow gets broken, okay? The insulin, your cells become resistant to insulin and they don't let the insulin get, in, get through the cell membrane to get into your cell so that the insulin can actually, you know, bind to the sugar and, you know, replace it into the storages. This is called insulin resistance. And diabetes starts from here. 
pre-diabetes, when you have that insulin resistance, you will end up having high blood sugar even when you are fasting. When you go to the doctor's office, when you do a blood work, when you are fasting for like 10, 12 hours, if your blood sugar runs in the high category, that means you know you are on the brink of getting that being diabetic. Uh, of course, there are two types of diabetes. One is type one, and uh, which is an is not an acquired disease; it's inherited or it's an autoimmune disease. Well, you can't do much about that, but you can do so much about type two diabetes by staying away from sugar, okay? Extra sugar that is everywhere. You have to read the labels, food labels of anything that you, that comes in a package because they've even uh, um, salty, like the Ritz crackers, they have sugar in them, okay? Simple white sugar in them. That's why one third of Americans has three diabetes. And 90% of them don't know about it because they don't get tested, okay? Uh, can you reverse it? Yes, because it's an acquired disease. It is not your um, destiny, okay? You can reverse it with exercise, weight loss, and dietary changes. And the main thing about dietary change is to stay away from white sugar. And in terms of the exercise, People keep asking me if they have diabetes, what should I do? They, the research has found already, I don't have to have an opinion, research has already shown us that the greatest improvement in diabetes control can be achieved with exercise programs that combine. It's called concurrent training, aerobic and resistance training, okay? So the uh, best way of combining those two is a heat. Okay, high intensity and interval training with, that is done with resistance uh, training, with like the weights or you know your body weight exercises like the CrossFit, okay? That's what I'm trying to teach you because CrossFit has been known to be very useful in terms of um, reversing your diseases, but that this is the only reason why, because they're combining aerobic. They're keeping the heart rate up, so they're creating a cardio type of workout by doing body weight or external weight exercises. And that's what I'm trying to teach you here, okay? So that's type two diabetes. When your blood is so thick and cannot run easily or flow easily, uh, you might end up having hypertension, okay? Hypertension is not just blood thickness. There are other reasons. Your arteries, uh, which houses your blood, okay, that arteries are the highways of your blood circulation. If they're clogged for your bad diet again, um, you will have hypertension. So either the blood gets thick or the arteries gets clogged, okay? Just like any hose and water relationship. If that water becomes too thick, cannot go through the hose, or if the hose has pla pla plaques around the inner walls of them, then again, it's gonna restrict the blood flow. It's, it's called hypertension. In the past, if you had um, even 120 over 80, that used to be called normal. Not anymore, they changed it in 2016, American Heart Association. Now it has to be lower than 120 over 80, okay, to, for you to be health or categorized healthy. So you have to control your blood pressure because it's the underlying cause of many other diseases, including stroke and heart attack. How do you lower your blood pressure? Losing extra body weight, number one less saturated fat in your diet because they cause the plaque in your artery. Exercise daily, so at least 30 minutes, continuous or accumulated. That means if you don't have time or energy to do 30 minutes of a workout, you can just take a walk for 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, and 10 minutes before going to bed. And that's 
that's about it. You can't prevent uh, or hypertension by doing this. Of course, salt intake or sodium, you, can, you have to reduce it and reduce or limit alcohol consumption. And finally, metabolic syndrome. This wasn't a disease if you look back 30, 40 years ago. Now this is a new acquired disease or a condition and there's a label for it. It's called metabolic syndrome or metabolic X. One fifth, every one individual in five individuals in the United States has metabolic syndrome, unfortunately. What is that? So there are five different factors doctors look at from your blood work or from your measurements, okay? If you happen to have three of the five, you are labeled as having a metabolic syndrome and you have to be treated for it. And the number one treatment is to change your diet and increasing exercise or including exercise in your life. And of course, other, other uh, medications or procedures. So let's look at those five factors. You don't have to memorize them all. You have to understand what are they. One is high fasting blood sugar, just like we talked about, okay? It is over 110 milligrams per deciliter, but you don't have to memorize the number. Just understand your fasting blood sugar is higher than normal. You have high blood pressure or hypertension, okay? You have high triglycerides, which is the fat um, droplets running in your bloodstream. Yes, we have some because we eat fat and we produce fat, but if it is above a normal range, that's called high triglyceride, and low HDL. So HDL is the healthy cholesterol, okay? There are two types of cholesterols in the body. LDL, which is bad one, HDL is the healthy one. You can memorize or remember this from the letter it, it starts with. H D L. H stands for healthy. Okay, let's make it up that way. It doesn't stand for healthy, but let's make it up that way. LDL, let's make that L for lousy. Okay, lousy cholesterol and healthy cholesterol. So they don't look at the lousy one. It's interesting. The doctors do not uh, evaluate for if your lousy cholesterol is high. They look at the, if your healthy good one is low because the good one protects you from many other uh, bad factors. So they, they don't care about LDL being too high because even though if your LDL is too high, if your HDL also is high, you're protected. It's like the shield, okay, for your arteries. So if you have low HDL and large waist circumference or apple-shaped body, if you, when you gain weight, you tend to gain it through your midsection, not your butt, okay? Uh, that's called an apple shape. When you gain it through the midsection, Unfortunately, it's more dangerous in terms of health uh, because it's around your vital organs, your heart, lungs, and everything. It's called visceral fat, and we don't want that. Even if you were to accumulate it around your butt or your legs, thighs, that's even better for your health, but you can't change that. That's, that's in your genes, okay? So if you happen to have three of these five, you have metabolic syndrome, and you have to be treated for it, depending on what you got, okay? If you only have, for example, if you don't have blood, uh, high blood pressure, and you just have low HDL, high triglycerides, and large weight circumference, you might not need a medication. You might just need to change your diet and increase your exercise. And HDL, you might ask, because people ask, like, if this is a protection for my body, how am I gonna increase my HDL? It's mainly your diet, and there are foods that increases HDL, like walnuts, like avocados, 
if you increase them in your diet regularly, you will end up having high HDL. As well as research has shown us, I'm, when I covered the HIIT uh, or high intensity interval training uh, topic, I'm gonna again touch on that, but high intensity interval training has been shown to increase HDL if it's done over eight to 12 weeks regularly, okay? So is this okay. metabolic syndrome, is it another form of diabetes? No, it's not. No. It's all separate, like it's, it's a, a syndrome by itself. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we don't want that. Unfortunately, one in every five Americans has it already. Okay, so any questions? The reason I wanted to cover this is for you to uh, create awareness about where you're heading, okay? If you're not exercising regularly, you should get started. It doesn't have to be fancy exercise. Just 30 minutes every day accumulated. It doesn't even have to be continuous for your health. I'm not talking about, you know, shaping or, you know, sculpting and looking good and I don't care. I'm just talking about your insides, okay? Are you healthy? And if you want to keep healthy, this is what you need to do. Stay away from sugar. As simple as that. Stay as much as you can away from sugar and include some sort of movement, like walking. That's the simplest way. Just wake up. If you can, we talked about this, being selfish. You can say, this is me time. I'm heading out. I'm just going to do my 30 minutes walk and I'll be done for the day. Okay, you can do that so that your mind is clear. You're not feeling guilty for the rest of the day. You know, you can do that. So that's one option, the simplest option of all. You can tell your parents or anyone who, who asked your opinion about this. Any questions? I'm stopping the screen share and then stopping.